Minister Evelyn Hardin from To God Be The Girl Ministry, Charlotte, North Carolina, under the leadership of our Pastor Kenny Sesser, our co-pastor Wanda Sesser. Um, welcome back to our Bible study. Tonight I will be talking about restoration. Let's go into a word of prayer. Father God, I thank you for this night of Bible study, oh God. Thank you for allowing me to speak your word to the people, oh God. God, I pray that we not only be hearers of the word, oh God, but we be doers of the word, oh God. Have your way. Sit Minister Evelyn down, Father God, and have your way through, this, through me in this Bible study, oh God. In Jesus' name, amen. Just like I said earlier, we, tonight I will be talking about restoration. Restoration is an act of restoring or the condition of being restored. In a few minutes while I'm talking, I want you to just go with me and take a couple of deep breaths. Breathe in through your nose, out through your mouth. As I talk, begin to clear your mind and think about, just think about being restored. And I'll tell you when to get started. Okay, now let's get started. Breathe in through your nose, out through your mouth as I talk. Now think about new life. Think about growth in your life. Cast all your cares upon the Lord. Think about you standing on solid foundation. And you're moving forward in life. Your mind has been cleared up. Cast all your cares on Jesus. Think of your life as a tree planted on solid ground with rivers of clear, fresh water flowing in your life, flowing through your heart, flowing all over your body. Rivers of clean, fresh water. Now, that's what it feels like being restored. It feels good to relax and think about being restored. Just that little bit right there can help clear up your mind of some things. It can take to a place, a peace where nobody can enter in. But you got to go there and you got to release some things. You got to give some things to God. You know, just think about being restored and you just stand, you just plant it, plant on solid ground. Rivers of clean, fresh water flowing through your life, flowing over your life, you know. But to be restored, you must repent. You must truly repent. Stop playing around. Keep on doing, you know, you do re repent, ask God to forgive. Then we go back doing the same thing with that we was doing, you know, doing the same thing. Stop playing. Truly repent and give up some things that you're doing that you know you're not supposed to be doing. Go with me to Psalms 51, verses 1, 3, and 10. I'm going to give you a chance to find that. And it reads, have mercy upon me, O God, according to thy loving kindness, according unto the multitude of thy tender mercies, blot out my transgressions. Verse 3. For I acknowledge my transgressions and my sin is ever before me. Verse 10. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Now David, after he was exposed for committing adultery and having Bathsheba's husband killed, he was heartbroken. You know that? You know, he was thinking, I, I, I did some... Some terrible things, God, you know, and he acknowledged his sin. Some people won't even acknowledge their sin. They just go ahead and sin it. And no, you did wrong. No, you just messed up. Go, you just sin and stuff. Then when you begin to start drifting back and doing the, so, so many things that you had stopped doing, you start, you know, doing stuff. You start going through things, start the happening, you know, just anything out there. The blue, blue just come up, you know. You're doing good, every, every t and then when you turn around, something bad is happening, you know. But you know, you sinned and did wrong. And you didn't even repent and ask God to forgive you for that sin. And then you feel like, man, what's going on in my life? I'm slipping up. I can't stop doing this. I can't stop doing that. Stop and think about it. Did you repent of some of the things? Did you... Do you really want to stop doing some of the things you're doing? Or you just want to continue to go on and on and on, doing what you're doing? Knowing that you need to repent and get some things right. Oh, it's in the back of your head that you should repent and get some things right. But you sometimes you're not even you don't even want to stop doing what you're doing. You don't even want to stop doing it. So that's why sometimes you want to repent and ask God to forgive you, God. You know, it's like what? I'm gonna go ahead and do it. But but still, you must stop and repent and ask God to forgive you. Doing some stuff you know you're not supposed to do. Repent, ask God to forgive you. You know, I know you feel like, well, I repented for that last week and I'm still doing it. But still, 
just repent. Ask God to help you. Be to be free of some things. You know, it's good to repent and ask God to forgive you. That's one part of being restored. Mm hmm. That's one part of being restored. You must repent. And you can't act like you know. You just sin. You, know, you can't just keep on acting like you ain't do nothing. And you know you did something, but you want God to restore you. Oh, I want God to restore me, but you ain't repenting for the other the, the 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 other things that you did. You know, you skip over the things that you did, but you must repent. Our pastor was talking. I think it was Sunday. He was talking. He said to be restored, you have to repent. Get yourself cleansed up. You know. As God, you know, David acknowledged what he had done. It, it, it touched it. You know, he wanted his heart renewed. He wanted his heart clean. You know, he wanted to be washed and clean. And then, and, and, and once you repent and ask God to cleanse you up and you got your heart right, you know, if you got your heart right, you can begin to watch God move in your life and restore what the canker worm stole. And when I, talk, when I say canker worm, and some people don't understand what I mean by canker worm, Job, one of the minor prophets, he referred to the canker worm uh, when he was talking about the invasion of Judah. He gives description of the land being a desolate wilderness, and he also makes a divine appeal to Judah to repent with all their heart, and after that, there would be a divine healing. Job was describing how the canker worm was going to leave some things like a desolate wilderness, you know, but if you can't repent to God and ask God for forgiveness, you'll be healed. And you'll be restored. Go with me to Joel 2 and 25. And it reads, And I will restore to you the years that the locusts have eaten, the canker worm and the caterpillar, and the palmer worm, my great army, which I sent among you. And see, Joel was talking about how the land was going to be desolate and wilderness. And, you know, but all he was saying, he was making an appeal to Judah to repent. With all their heart. You hear me? With, repent with all your heart. That's what Joe was trying to get, you know, Judah to do. So that they could be restored. And that's the way it is in our lives, you know. Sometimes our lives feel like a desolate wilderness. Can't get a prayer through. I'm turning back, you know, during this pandemic. I don't have nobody laying hands on me. I don't have nobody praying for me. I'm going back and doing the things I used to do. But don't you know you can still walk for in this pandemic? You, you can stop doing some of the things you used to do, but you got to acknowledge what you're doing is wrong. You got to acknowledge that and repent and ask God to forgive you. You know, uh, just like I said, David, he acknowledged what he was doing. He knew what he was doing, and he he wanted his heart cleansed. But you got to truly, truly repent and ask God to forgive you for some of the things and stop doing some of the things that you're doing so that you can be restored. And then after you've been restored, you repent, you ask God to forgive you. You know, situations still come up. Things happen. Because the devil don't want you to be restored. He wants you to sit down in the slump somewhere in a dark room, in a corner. Can't hear nothing from God. Can't, you know, you don't, don't even want to speak the word. Don't even want to do nothing. But, my God, after you've been restored, don't even listen to that. Don't even pay attention to all that negative stuff, you know. Just move on forward with God. And then after you've been restored, just remember, no weapon formed against you should prosper in your restoration. And you got to remember that God is with you and he'll, he'll never leave you or forsake you in your restoration. You know, and you've been restored. God, I forgave you of some things you're trying not to do. You know, you you might not have everything right. Every I died, every T cross, you know. But you're working on your restoration. You're working on being restored. Some have been restored. Some working on being restored. Whatever ever you at in your life, put on the whole armor of God. So that when these things come back up and try to stop you from being restored, try to take you back to doing some things that you used to do, you know, put on that whole armor of God. Put it on. So that you can stand against the, the vows of the wicked ones. So that you can stand against those schemes that are trying to take you right back there where you used to be. Put on that whole armor of God. Go with me to Ephesians 6. Let me see. Ephesians 6, 10 through 18. And it reads, Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that ye may be able to stand against the vows of the devil. 
For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take unto the, you the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to stand, to withstand in the evil day, and having done all to stand. Stand therefore, having your lines girt about with truth, and having on the breastplate of righteousness, and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith, my God, within, with wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked, and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. You hear me? Which is the word of God. Plant that word in your heart so somebody try to come and stop you from being restored. You had that word to fight with. Praying always with all prayer and supplication in his spirit and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. My God, put on the full armor of God to, so that you can be able to stand, so that you can keep your restoration, you know, so that you, these schemes and anything trying to come up against you, my God, you can fight with the word. Just like I say, put on that whole armor of God while you are being restored and after restoration, put it on. Continue to put on the whole armor of God. And, and, and you know, the whole armor of God is one outfit that, that never changes. You don't have to worry about if you got the shirt, if the shirt matched the pants, if the nail polish go with the outfit, you know, if the shoes, the same color outfit, the whole armor of God never changes. You can go in the shoes, you can take the armor of God, you can get in the shower with the armor of God, still there, get out of the shower, still there. It's still there, but you got to pray. Put on the breastplate of righteousness. You know, start living right, start doing right. Put on the helmet of salvation, you know, and the belt of faith. Put on the uh, the shield of faith, my God, and the word of God. You know, Jesus is the armor of God. Put Jesus on, you know. And, 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 and as I did the exercise earlier, take the deep breaths in and out. You can do that anytime. And can't you nobody take that away from you. When you feel like you're overwhelmed, you know, you need to be restored, you're just going through, take time out and just sit down. Sit sit down. You can't handle everything. Stop trying to handle everything that goes on. Sit down and give it to God. And begin to just sit down and something stress you out so bad, you feel like you can't handle it. Go to a, somewhere and just begin to meditate on God. Take a couple of deep breaths. In through your nose, out through your mouth. Think about it. Think about <clears throat> how blessed you are. Even though you're going through some things going on, think about how blessed you are. Think about being restored. And that, it, it feels so good when you just relax and just think about the goodness of Jesus, you know. And focus on trying to live right. Focus on keeping that full arm of God on so you can stay restored. So you can get, if you're not restored, so you can get restored. And then after you're restored, then you can stay restored. You know, sometimes things happen, we get restored, we forget about, you know, um, the word of God. But keep that word planted. So when something come up, at, you know, come up against you, you've been restored, just think about the word of God. Put on your arm on God and keep it on. Don't take your guys down, just keep it on. And live right for Jesus. I tell you, he'll be there for you. He'll work it out for you. He'll help you to be restored. And then, you know, once you put on that shield, some things won't even come now your dwelling. You know, 10,000 come at you, come at you, they won't even come now your dwelling. You know, things come at you. You know, no matter what it is. But if you're planted and rooted and dwelling in the secret, secret place of the Most High, you know, these things won't come down your dwelling. They won't hurt you. But you got to stay prayed up. You got to put on the whole arm of God and just rest in his arms and just accept your restoration. Keep on praying. Keep on, you know, fasting and doing everything for God and keep moving. Don't park. Just keep moving so you can keep your restoration. I hope you enjoyed Bible study on tonight. Have a blessed week.